Tech Chop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. TechPodcasts.com. If it's tech, it's here. Internet censorship is no longer just a problem in countries like China or North Korea these days. No, we in the United States and parts of Europe are starting to feel the cold grip of the government squeezing down on our internet usage as well. Let's look at one way we can get around that, shall we? This episode of Tech Chop is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Welcome to episode 18 of Tech Chop. I, of course, am Paul Bauer, a.k.a. Twitter.com slash Pablo. And this episode is the first official episode where we move from a pathetic monthly show to a semi-pathetic weekly show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Really, it's a labor of love. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you. Like the new set? Pretty snazzy, right? Almost makes the show look legit, don't you think? Anyone? No? Anywho, this show is still going to strive to stay under 15 minutes because I know your internet attention spans can't usually handle more than that. And most of you watch Tech Chop on the internet, don't you? If more of you started watching Tech Chop on your set-top box like Roku, Google TV, or Boxy using the Tech Podcast Network app, your attention span might magically broaden, wouldn't it? Amazing that you can mindlessly veg out in front of your TV watching a show but not on your computer. I digress. So let's get back on topic of today's show, which is basically on how you can surf the internet anonymously. Yes, with stricter internet regulations being pushed into law in the US and the UK and other places, we the people must start hiding our daily online activities from Big Brother. If we don't want the government, I'll have been our business. Before I get into the main tool of the show, let's get into a new segment I will be adding to the weekly shows that I like to call the Weekly News Brief. This week's news brief is brought to you by Gamefly. Have games delivered to your house? Keep them as long as you want? Send them back when you're done. Tech Chop viewers can sign up for a no-risk free trial by going to deals.techchop.com and clicking on the Gamefly banner. Red Hat Enterprise Linux recently celebrated their 10th birthday. Red Hat Incorporated launched Red Hat Enterprise Linux in 2002 and created the first ever open source subscription service, which in turn helped to bring Linux into the enterprise. Moonlight, the open source implementation of Microsoft's Silverlight plugin, has packed up shop and stopped development. The Moonlight project was created in 2009 and provided Linux users with a way of viewing Silverlight content when browsing the internet. The main reason for Moonlight going dormant is because of Silverlight's poor adoption. If you have a small child between the ages of 2 and 12, there's a new Linux sister out there for your little one. Well, new to me anyway. It's called DowDow Linux. Dowdow comes from the French word for blanky and is designed to look more like a gaming console system that's easy for children to use. If you want to get your kids started on the Linux path early, you might want to check it out. Finally, Linux founder Linus Torvalds apparently hates GNOME 3. In his Google Plus page, he wrote a very lengthy rant about the newest incarnation of the widely used Linux desktop manager and how he's been avoiding it but was finally forced to use it when he broke down and upgraded his Fedora install from 14 to 17. News for the weekly news brief is taken right from our Tech Chop Daily Paper Lead page, available at news.techchop.com. Don't forget that you can sponsor your own news brief for only $10 by clicking the donate button in the sidebar at techchop.com. Got something to say? We'll be your 30-second podium for only $10. Tech Chop! The tool I'll be showing you today is relatively famous. In fact, you may have even heard of it. It's called Tor, or the Onion Router. Wikipedia describes Tor as a system intended to enable online anonymity. Tor client software routes internet traffic through a worldwide volunteer network of servers in order to conceal a user's location or usage from anyone conducting network surveillance or traffic analysis. Using Tor makes it more difficult to trace internet activity, including visits to websites, online posts, instant messages, or other communication forms. Back to the user and is intended to protect users' personal freedom, privacy, and ability to conduct con confidential business by keeping their internet activities from being monitored. Basically, to explain what Tor does, let me point to the James Bond movie Goldeneye. In that movie, the character of Boris Grishenko, who was the hacker who worked for the Yanis Syndicate, hacked into the FBI mainframe from Moscow while messing around. 
To cover his tracks, he routed his traffic through several different countries to keep the FBI from knowing exactly where the hack was coming from. Well, in a nutshell, that's what Tor does. And it's absolutely free. Not only is it free, but I've included it in Bowerpunt 2 Linux 12.04. Which, if you didn't know, is my personal Linux distro that I've been making for quite a while. In this version, along with the normal hacking tools and systems administration tools, I added more items to help protect your online activities from Uncle Sam. Tor being one of them. I'll show you how easy it is to surf anonymously using Tor on Bowerpunty Linux. But first... Sponsor! Some water is coming. And that means many of us will be spending more time working from home working on the road, or better still, working from the beach. With all those slackers trying to escape real work by avoiding the office and getting their sunbathing on, rounding them up for a meeting is almost impossible. Well, not impossible if you have GoToMeeting with HD Faces by Citrix, though, am I right? GoToMeeting by Citrix allows you to collaborate on files and plans online. And with HD Faces, all you need is a webcam to turn your online meetings into a group HD video conference. Which is nice because sometimes we just need a little FaceTime to get stuff done. You just can't get that kind of quality collaboration on a phone call. Attendees can join your online meeting from any computer, iPad, iPhone, or Android device by simply downloading the free app. My viewers can try GoToMeeting with HD Faces free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. Then download the free app. Bam. Done. One more thing. As if using GoToMeeting for free wasn't good enough, GoToMeeting is literally giving away eight brand spanking new iPads on Facebook. All you have to do is visit Facebook and like the GoToMeeting page. Then you can enter to win a new iPad. And you can refer a friend. If they win the iPad, so do you. So spread the word. Check it out. Like GoToMeeting on Facebook, and you can end up using GoToMeeting on a brand new iPad. The awesomeness levels have just been kicked up a notch. The ball's in your court now, Jack. I hope you win, and don't forget to try GoToMeeting for free today. And we're back. In the first part of the show, we talked about surfing the internet anonymously using Tor, or the Onion Router. And I mentioned that it's included with Bowerpunty Linux 12.04. Now I'll show you how easy it is to use. Bowerpunt 2 Linux can be ran from a USB drive, a DVD, or it can be installed as your main operating system. It's your choice. If you want to surf anonymously from the library where you're certainly being monitored, thanks to the Patriot Act, well, then you might want to run it from a USB drive there. Otherwise, installing it is a wonderful option. That's what I do. Once you boot up to Bowerpunt 2, Tor is automatically running in the background along with Privoxy, but you aren't surfing anonymously from the get-go. To begin your anonymous browsing, all you need to do is open up Google Chrome and press the little green button with the at symbol on it. When it turns green, you are now anonymous. We are anonymous. You can verify that you're now anonymous by checking your public IP address. One site that will show you your public IP address is whatismyip.org. Alternatively, you can browse to check.torproject.org as well, which is a page that will either tell you that you are browsing through Tor or you're not. In Bowerpunt 2, only Chrome is sent to proxy through the Tor network. If you want other programs to proxy through Tor, you'll have to configure them to do that yourself. The settings you need are to set your proxy support applications to use the SOX 5 protocol. Point to 127.0.0.1 as the proxy server and use port 9050. And that's it. If you start adding Tor to your arsenal of privacy protecting tricks, it'll make the government's job that much more difficult to see what you're doing online. Another good side effect of this is that it keeps marketing agencies from tracking your every move as well. So if you just want to use this to keep companies like Facebook and Google out of your junk, then hey, it works well for that too. Do you use Tor? If so, why? Do you use something else? Know of something better than Tor? Let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you all use to protect your online privacy from the man. That's all I have for this episode. If you have any questions, sound off in the comments or shoot me an email, info at techshop.com. Be sure to catch Tech Shop and our sister shows on the Tech Podcast Network. Be sure to tune in weekly now using the Raw Voice TPN app on Android. This week's TPN show of the week is the SpamCast. SPAM stands for the Software Process and Measurement Cast and covers topics that deal with challenges in the way work is done in information technology as it grows and evolves. Listen to the SpamCast every Sunday on the Tech Podcast Network. We'll see you next week right here on Tech Shop.